Look at what I discovered. Probably midway through the game. There's a map system. And you can take shortcuts. This is why you should probably read the instructions. If it was mentioned in the instructions. But this is very useful. And we have two more locations to find. Now, ever since she uh, mentioned that the worm that she had in her inventory, I've been wondering where are we going to use it. I think we have to use it now. And we have to get a new one because now we have a home for that worm. And I will hand that apple to Jane and scare the living bejesus out of her when she jungles. So we need to go back to that mushroom, I really don't want mushroom circle. I think that was this way? Yes. And we will get more worms. There we go. I shall name you Kenneth the Second. Kenneth the Second. Very good. Now, Kenneth the Second, here's your home. The worm has found a new home within the holes of the rotten apple. Now to scare Jane and cause a great distraction so I can switch the herbs. I dare you to juggle an extra apple. Easy. Yuck, a worm! There we go. Perfect. Thanks, Jane. I managed to swap them without her noticing. Someone is going to have a rude awakening when they make some tea. A small bunch of elderflowers. But now we can go and make our tincture. To relieve the joints, to get some goat milk. Right, I have to remember. Use the map system. <laughs> Bloody hell. Good day. I have the ingredients you asked for. Wonderful! Hand them over. There you go. Tell Mr. Bryden to apply this poultice to the area in question. It works wonders. Thank you very much. It works wonders. Oh, for this map system, you only have to press M on the keyboard. And away we go. So much faster. Yes? I've got a poultice for your joints, Mr. Bryden. It was prepared by Mildred Walker. Who? You may know her as Mother Mildred. Oh, thank you, lass. That Mildred knows what she's doing. I should have thought to see it myself. She said to apply it directly to where the pain is. It should work very swiftly. I'll give it a try. Oh, that did the trick, lass. I feel like a lad of twenty again. I suppose you'll be wanting me to milk old Eunice for your in return. If you don't mind, I'd appreciate it. A fair exchange. Stand well back, lass. Believe me, I'm not coming an inch closer. And we're putting the fresh milk in the rancid milk bucket. There you are, lass. Some fresh milk. Thank you very much, Mr. Bryden. The bucket is filled with fresh goat milk. Kinda gross, because the bucket wasn't washed. We can see that. Oh well, that'll do. Hey, it's the apple with the worm. I'll let the worm enjoy his new home. Yeah. You go, buddy. Fresh scotch eggs! I've got a pail of fresh milk here for you, Miss Tompkins. You haven't. Here. 
Mom, you've saved my height. Thank you. Are you all right? I'm worried about Mr. Ambrose. Any road, I'm heading back to Panswick Manor now. Would you still like to meet his lordship? Very much so. Now, I can't guarantee you'll be home all right. He's a very busy man. I'll take my chances. Follow me, then. Go on over. It's not much further. Time to call this! Sorry, Mum. Give it here, then. What the hell is this muck? Goat's milk, Mum. You daft bint! Since when does his lordship take goat's milk with his tea? Oh, he will not be pleased. Get back to your sweeping before I clip you over the head. Sorry, Mum. I mean, it's just going to be a little gamier tea. Where is Lord Panswick? Sorry, ma'am. I can't talk. Miss Fenchurch is ever so mad at me. I've no time for frolicking with the flock. Some fine-looking flowers. Some fine-looking flowers. Some fine-looking flowers indeed. Hello, Mrs. Uh, Fenchurch. Hello there. Bugger off, you whelp. This is private land. Hello to you too. Lovely woman. Miss Fenchurch is a cruel looking woman, her face set in a permanent scowl. I was wondering if it might be possible to speak with Lord Panswick. Are you deaf, girl? Don't make me fetch the guards. They're armed, you know. By Christ, you're like a dog with a bone! Do you want to get yourself shot? I can assure you the only things getting shot around here are the pheasant. And perhaps the odd grouse. <laughs> Greetings, my lady. Lord James Panswick, at your disposal. Your Lord Panswick? As I live and breathe. You could have told me that before. What is life without mystery, Miss Bateman? A predictable stagger to the grave? I was imagining someone... Much older and far less handsome? Something like that. <laughs> See? I can read your mind, my dear. Now, may I ask, what brings you to my manor? I wanted to ask if I could borrow some of your labourers. Oh? For what purpose? I intend to excavate Hobbs Barrow tomorrow and I'm in need of some assistance. An excavation? How very delightful. We're in the middle of our own works right this minute. Follow me, Miss Bateman. Great. Come along. I promise I don't bite. Capital. Sleazy painter is the lord. Fantastic. For generations, this chapel was a place of unique devotion. And this was until some of my more ungrateful ancestors forgot him and abandoned it. Why did they abandon it? Men of great wealth and power can grow so comfortable that they forget they still need the divine. The sacrifices required to maintain such a relationship were no longer being made. The chapel soon turned to rubble, and with time, even the villagers forgot him. His influence endured, but only with the isolated few who lived on the very fringes of these moors. Believe it or not, my family's fortunes have dwindled ever since. Since I succeeded my father, it has become my life's work to restore this place of worship. With this sacred place rebuilt, he shall be venerated once more, and the name Panswick shall be uttered again across all of England. He guided the hands of my ancestors. Now it is time for him to guide us. Bewley is a godless place. Have you forgotten about St. Edmunds? Father Roach might disagree. <laughs> I shall bring him back to these lands, and this chapel shall be his seat once again. A new world. 
But it seems like you wish to bring back the past. From out of the old world shall come the new. A greater truth. But I digress. Horace, my dear fellow. Aye, your lordship. This fair lady here is in need of some assistance. Would you and your chaps be up for a spot of digging at Hobbs Barrow tomorrow? Hobbs Barrow? Ah, your lordship, tis no bother. Good man. You're in luck, my dear. These are my finest, and they're all yours. Thank you. I am grateful. On one condition. Yes? I've heard wonders about Mary de Plancy's Bakewell puddings. I'd rather like to try them for myself. Your lordship, you're giving me the help of your men in exchange for cakes. Yes. But... Farewell, my beauty. Wait! Ugh, barf. His lordship is, uh... is very, very, very sleazy. I'll get those cakes. I I'm wondering what kind of deity he's referring to. Seems like he's interested in, um, a different world order. Is his lordship joking about the Bakewell puddings? No, miss. His lordship is a man of folly. How ridiculous! He treats you all right if you do what he asks. Please let us get on with our toil. If you do as his lordship requests, we'll help you tomorrow. Please let us get- If you do- They have some decent equipment here. It will be more than useful for the excavation. They have some decent- Hey, frowny face. Good day. Oh, another strumpet looking to find her way into his lordship's bedchambers, I see. I'm nothing of the sort. Ah, I've seen plenty of your sort before. I haven't seen Mrs. the Plenty with her, uh, sweets outside for selling in a while. Maybe she's still in here? Yeah. Maybe she has some in the basket? This must belong to Mrs. de Plancy. Maybe I can swipe some? That's not mine to interfere with. No. Good day to you, pet. Hello, Mrs. de Plancy. Do you still have some of your homemade Bakewell puddings, Mrs. de Plancy? Oh, you're too late, pet. I've a few left, but they're set aside for someone else. Might you please be able to bake me some more? Sorry, I, I, I'm not in the mood for baking. Truth be told, my dear husband Albert passed away recently. Me thoughts are all over the shop. I'm so sorry to hear that. Aye, he's in God's hands now. May I ask who you have set aside the puddings for? Oh, uh, Father Roach. He won't be back until tomorrow. Won't they be off by then? Not at all. Besides, pet, as I told you, I'm not in the mood for all this baking chatter. Sorry, Mrs. de Plancy. I feel pretty horrible that I'm, I'm gonna have to steal them from you. Were you married to Albert a long time? Aye. Too many years to count. He was the cobbler here in Bewley. The most dashing cobbler in all of England, I used to tell him. Oh, love is precious, pet. There's naught that can replace the all it leaves in your heart. I can relate to that in my own way. I wish you strength in this difficult time. Thank you. With God's blessing, I'll get by. Thanks for your time. Lord be with you. And with you. That's not mine to- mm. This must belong to Mrs. de Plancy. Where did you hide them? Where's the tarts? Oh, hello, shifty character. This is where you moved. He's the grave digger. He looks like a rather shady character. I have nothing else to ask for the time being. They put a cross on this now. The simple wooden cross bears a small plaque on which is inscribed the name Albert de Plancy. Relative, are you? No, just looking. He were the cobbler who's going to mend me boots now. <laughs> hmm. The simple wooden cross bears... Hello. Does this fresh grave belong to Mrs. de Plancy's late husband? Aye. Rather bare, isn't it? My job is to dig the graves, not decorate them. 
Goodbye. Dara. Hmm. What can we do with this grave? I really don't want to traumatize Mrs. DePlancy. She seems like a nice enough old lady. Maybe we can talk to her about her husband a little more, and she'll get a little more emotional. And give me some tarts. I am so cold. <laughs> Good day to you, pet. Hello, Mrs. DePlancy. I saw your late husband's grave, Mrs. DePlancy. I am very sorry for your loss. Thank you, pet. I'm ashamed to say I couldn't afford now more than a simple wooden cross. You were a colourful man, our Albert. He deserves better. He loved his flower beds. He's only been gone a fortnight, and already his plants have gone to rot. May the Lord forgive me. Plants are difficult to maintain. I'm sure Albert would understand. His precious hippie astrum were the first to go. I would have loved to lay one on his grave. What does a hippie astrum flower look like? Oh, beautiful things they are. Tall stems topped with large red flowers. Hard to grow in this climate. They were his pride and joy. The remarkable thing is there's no scent to him. That's why he loved him so much. You see, he hated anything that smelled sickly sweet. Hippiastrum were just perfect. Let me know if you come across one, won't you? Of course, Mrs. DePlancy. So he hated everything that smelled sickly sweet. But you're renowned for your... sweet baked goods. Interesting. I did see... Thanks for your time. I did see a bunch of red flowers quite recently. So let's go there right now. These things. These matched the description of the flowers Mrs. DePlancy mentioned. There's no scent. You get away from my hippie astrum! Ah, apologies. Move! Well, that confirms it. Great, but they are incredibly well protected. I'll have to find a way to distract Miss Fenchurch. She's watching me like a hawk. I've no time for f Good day. Hello. I really need one of those hippie astrum flowers. Why? It's a long story. Might you please be able to get one for me? Or distract Miss Fenchurch so I can take one? Those flowers are Miss Fenchurch's favourite. She spends hours looking after them. Sorry, Mum. It's just that I'm so worried about Mr. Ambrose. The milkman? Aye. We were to run away together today. I see. I'm worried sick that he stood me up. Without Mr. Ambrose, this job is all I have. I can't risk losing it over a flower. I didn't realize it was uh, so serious between you and Mr. Ambrose. I'm sorry, Miss Tompkins. I still haven't seen him. Do you think he's abandoned me? I'm sure that's not the case. He must have been delayed somewhere. Could you try to find him for me, ma'am? Uh... Oh, please, ma'am. I'd do anything for you if you found my love. I can try. Oh, thank you. You're ever so kind, Mom. I guess I could try the local bar. What does Mr. Ambrose look like? He's got brown hair. I'm afraid I'll need a bit more to go on. Sorry, Mom. I'm too upset. Please find him, won't you? Hey, stop your nattering and get back to your sweeping. Sorry, Miss Fenchurch. Why don't you sweep, Miss Fenchurch, and stop being the bulldog of the house? All right, brown hair. Not a lot to go on, but it's a start. He might be delayed because there's no trains today. Hmm. You look, uh, like not the guy. Good day. Hello there. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Ralph. Not seen you around before. I'm just visiting. 
What brings you to the market today? I purchased a scotch egg for me tea. You want a bite? No, thank you. Do you know Mr Ambrose, the milkman? I do, yes. Have you any idea where he might be? He is usually here by now. So I heard. He normally arrives by the road to the east of Bewley. Thank you. I'm looking for some help with an excavation tomorrow. Might you be interested? Sorry, miss. I've already got my own job. Enjoy your scotch egg. I will. Alright, so he usually arrives by the east path. Oh, flashback time. There we are. Your shells are looking much more interesting now. I pestered Mother for years to let me bring some of your treasures here. I think she's worried that I'd want to follow in your path. She has hidden most of your discoveries away. I had to beg her to bring me to visit you, you know. I shouldn't worry you with all that. Do you know that I have a story for each of these pots? Well, I don't know if they're all true, but they are my memories. Even though I was so young, I still remember our adventures together. Would you like me to share my memories of them? Well, I'm going to, whether you like it or not. <laughs> This is from the first dig I remember you taking me on. The excavation of West Kennet Long Barrow. I found it wedged behind a stone as you ate your sandwich. You said, now there's a tiny urn for a tiny girl. Mother was so angry when you brought this one home, wasn't she? William, that simply will not do. It's taking up all the space on the mantelpiece. Once you moved it to your study, I remember creeping in to take a peek at it. We found this one together in that mucky old barrow near Avebury. I think it was the second time you'd taken me on a dig with you. I remember you bringing it up to your face to look inside and shrieking in horror. There's a bloody rat in there, you screamed. <laughs> hmm, I think you brought this one back from a trip abroad. I would have loved to go with you, but Mother didn't want me to. I remember you being so proud of it. It looks ancient. You were incredibly excited about this one. I hadn't gone on an expedition with you yet. You were so happy about it, showing it to Mother and I. You didn't stop talking about it for hours. I thought, how can Daddy be so excited over some old broken pottery? But it wasn't long until I understood. I almost forgot. While I was searching for your pots in the shed, I found one of your manuscripts. I thought Mother had burnt all your notebooks, but she missed one. It was an account of barrows across the east of England. I managed to read it all before Mother took it away. Daddy, it was fascinating. I've decided that is what I want to do with my life. I'm going to travel the country, excavating and documenting my own finds. Well, as soon as I'm old enough to escape Mother, that is. When you're feeling better, we can go out on expeditions together again, just like we used to. I promise you'll get better, Daddy. I'll do whatever it takes to make it so. I wouldn't count on it, but hey, there's hope. There's something ahead on the road. Uh-oh. Doesn't look great. My God! Mr. Ambrose! What the hell? I'm going to help you. What cruelty is this? Let me free you, sir. The rope is bound too tightly. I can't even free his mouth. Don't worry, sir. I'll find a way to free you. Aw. <laughs> a cat is, uh, scooping up all the milk. It's Herbert. He's lapping up the spilt milk. Spilt milk is soaking into the mud. Who did this to you? Please hold still. I I'm going to cut you free. He had been so tightly bound that I could barely cut through without hurting him further. 
His mouth was stuffed full of flowers of a most peculiar scent. I was dismayed at such savagery, and wondered if the feral folk Father Roach had mentioned were responsible for this abhorrent act. After some considerable effort, I managed to cut him free. Are you all right? I... who were lost in visions of... of hell. Of hell itself. The devil. I saw the devil. Who did this to you? I... don't remember. Oh, the terrible sights I saw. I won't forget them till my last breath. Are you Mr. Ambrose? I... Yes. Yes. Edward Ambrose. You were to meet Miss Tompkins today. Oh, my love. Oh, my darling love. Let me take you to her. Here, take my hand. As we made the arduous trek to Panswick Manor, I probed Mr. Ambrose on who had done this to him. He insisted that he didn't remember anything, except for his nightmarish visions. My love! Jesus, what happened to you? Were you in a fight? Now, fret not, my love. I thought you'd abandoned me. Never. Thank your friend here for helping me out of a bind. Oh, Eddie. Let's get out of here, my darling. Hang on. You thieving bint! How have you got for garters? Oh, stick it where the sun don't shine, you bitter old sow! Uh, I... the cheek! <laughs> Here you are, ma'am. Thank you, Miss Tompkins. No, thank you for finding my poor Eddie. Oi, thank you, lass. Let's go, Eddie. I'm never setting foot on this godforsaken estate again. Good for them. Good luck, you two. Excellent. Now I have the flowers. And the annoying woman is away. Great. Back to the church. We have found the flowers. I have something for you. You found them? Oh, you dear child. Let's take them straight to Albert. You'll come with me, won't you? Of course, Mrs. De Plancy. You know, the things I miss most about him are the things that used to annoy me. The click of his jaw as he chewed his sandwiches, leaving his tools all around the house way he'd never back down from an argument. He's just quiet at home now. Silence. The funny thing is, that's what he always craved. Peace and quiet. He were a good man, our Albert. Sounds like he was. I'm so sorry. Do you fear death, pet? Interesting. A <laughs> very blunt question all of a sudden. It's the part in between that concerns me. It's the part in between that concerns me most. Whatever do you mean? My father had an accident, many years ago. Ever since, he's been in a state we can neither speak nor move. Oh, that does sound dreadful. I'm sorry, pet. I believe his mind to still be active, but perhaps this is the worst of all fates. To be trapped in one's own body and unable to express oneself while the world continues around you. That is what I fear. Maybe you'll get better one day. I'd do anything to make it so. Those flowers look beautiful. They do. Albert will be smiling down on us. Pet, I left me basket inside the church. You'll find some big well puddings in there. You can have them. Oh, you... I insist. You've brought an ounce of happiness into my day, dear. It's only just that I return some. Thank you, Mrs. De Plancy. To be truthful with you, I was saving him for myself. 
I shouldn't be so selfish. Lord, forgive me. You're nothing of the sort. I'll stay here with Albert a bit longer. You go back to your dear pit. Lord be with you. And you, Mrs. Duplancy. I mean, now I feel guilty that, you know, she just wanted some sweet treats for herself later on. To... <laughs> to give her some energy. But here I come, taking all of the tarts. Here they are. I mean, I don't have to take all of them. Mrs. De Plancy's famous Bakewell puddings. They smell delicious. I mean, the Lord can just have one of them, right? That's enough. I'll leave her to her grieving. Fair enough. Let's go back to the manor and give the man that has everything more things. The vision returns. I come bearing gifts. Freshly baked gifts? Yes. Three of Mrs. De Plancy's famous Bakewell puddings. Ho, 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 ho. You are an amusing creature, Thomasina. What do you mean? You must think me a scoundrel of the highest order for asking you to undertake such folly. Of course I would have lent you my men either way. I merely desired an excuse to share a cake with you. Lord Panswick. I take no pleasure in watching you scurry about Bewley to fulfill my every whim. Or do I? I do not find this amusing in the slightest. You have no idea what I had to go through to get these for you. Oh, I do, I do. And that's what I admire about you. Tenacity. Even in the face of something you know to be absurd, you don't give up, do you? Never. Though in this case, I ought to have. <laughs> now then, will you share one of these tempting confections with me? Ah, uh, why not? Why not? Splendid! I'm glad the rain doesn't put you off. You like to live a little dangerously, don't you, Thomasina? Let us stroll to the back. That sounds nice. We walked side by side down to the beck, his hand occasionally brushing my own. Despite Lord Panswick's entertaining company, I had an overwhelming feeling that time was being wasted. We ate those cakes down by the beck, and as he attempted the most charming lines he could muster upon me, I only had one thing on my mind. Father, could he be saved from his suffering? Was the answer to be found within Hobbs Barrow? I ached to find out. I didn't even notice the taste of those famous puddings. Seemingly disheartened by my lack of enthusiasm, Lord Panswick soon marched me back toward the ruined chapel. Chaps, listen up. You're to assist Miss Bateman's excavation tomorrow. What time, Miss Bateman? Early morning, if you don't mind. We'll be there whenever you need us, Miss. Hobbs Barrow. On the Bryden estate, if I'm not mistaken. We'll be there. Take your tools with you. Miss Bateman will need every assistance we can provide her with. It's no bother. Splendid! Thank you, lads. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll see you later, my dear. Thank you, Lord Panswick. We're finishing up here, miss. See you tomorrow morning, all right? Certainly. I appreciate your help. Well, that's a relief to have my crew assembled for tomorrow. It's getting dark and cold. Time to head back to the plough and furrow. Oh yeah, there's a con concert going, going on. I fear Miss Fenchurch might come at me with her pots and pans. It's best I stay out here. Actually, I wanted to go to a different area, the Eastern Road. feel that there's some stuff here that I can explore. These flowers were stuffed into Mr. Ambrose's mouth. Dark. These flowers... Perhaps they had a queer effect on Mr. Ambrose's mind. Mother Mildred might know more. Perhaps I could show them to Mildred Walker. 
The cart is beyond repair. I scared Herbert off. The milk is not salvageable. Bakewell, 32 miles. Beulie... Bakewell, 32 miles. Beulie really was in complete isolation before the railway line came in. Well, let's go to Mildred. I'd rather not walk in the woods at this late hour. We'll go tomorrow then. Hopefully we can. It's one of the flowers that had been stuffed into Mr. Ambrose's mouth. Good evening, Miss Bateman. Good evening, Stanley. Your Lordship? Stanley, my good man. To what do we owe the pleasure of your visit, Your Lordship? I've come to wish Miss Bateman good fortune for her grand excavation tomorrow. I'm really rather curious as to what she might turn up. As am I, Your Lordship. An exciting time for Bewley. Wouldn't you agree, Stanley? Oh, yes, your lordship. Very, very exciting. My dear, please, allow me the pleasure of buying you a drink. A welcome antidote to the wind's bite. Wouldn't you say, Stanley? Yes, indeed, your lordship. I mean, why not? We do want more visions. Why not? Splendid. You heard the fair lady. There you are. Thank you. Everyone, raise your glasses to Miss Bateman. May she conquer Hobbs Barrow and find all that she desires. Hip hip! Hooray! Hooray! You don't wish to join me in a beverage? Oh, you go ahead, my dear. Alcohol does not sit well with my constitution. Thank you, Your Lordship. I needed that. I aim to provide you with whatever your heart desires. I've reminded my chaps there to meet you at Hobbs Barrow in the morning. Thank you again, Lord Panswick. Till we meet again, fête des beaux rêves. Mr. Shoulder? Your Lordship? Have nice dreams, he said. Ugh, that, that guy. Ugh. Hello again, Mr. Shoulder. Miss Bearman. I've recruited the help of some local laborers to help with the excavation. Marvelous. When do we start? Tomorrow morning, first thing. Wonderful. Can I count on your assistance? Of course. I'll meet you here at the Plough and Furrow. Thank you for your time. Hi, Miss Bateman. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. <laughs> 